Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your other Shorty. And today we're going to take a look at Get Fury. Uh, it's another one from Garth Ennis and Jason Burroughs. It's another one from Garth Ennis writing about The Punisher. And Nick Fury a little bit as well, I suppose. Um, and I was sceptical about giving this one a, a full review. I thought it might be something to just talk about on social media, like in little posts here and there. Because I do sometimes worry that if uh, there's a few comic book creators out there who do a lot of things that I read, uh, they tend to get freedom to do a lot of cool things. They quite often work with the same creative team. For instance, Garth and Jason Burroughs have worked together quite a bit on Punisher, in fact, in the past. Uh, and I recently did... Um, a pretty brutal, horrific story uh, that they did for, I want to say, a Blaze or AWA. Um, and I feel like sometimes I'm just going to repeat myself. I'm just going to go through the motions of saying this is what Garth Ennis does and he does it really well. This is what Jason Burroughs does and he does it really well. But then it occurred to me that I do occasionally look at the stats of my videos and not that many people watch them. So the chances of the same people keep coming back and watching them and always seeing the same thing is like, hey, they, let's just do it anyway. So anyway... Garth Ennis really likes writing The Punisher, and he's very, very good at it. He is probably my favourite ever writer on The Punisher, I think because he got to the crux of the character really quite effectively, at least my interpretation of it. And again, art is subjective, is open to interpretation. I think anyone who thinks they should have a Punisher logo on a cop car is wrong. Um, but the more common interpretation is that he's just a guy who happens to really like doing murder. Like, he does a lot of it. Um, Jason Aaron recently did a very nice look at it, um, where it dissects this idea that uh, he was doing it because of uh, some, I don't know, vengeance or justice because of his wife got killed. But the more you look into Frank's past, you realise he was always heading down this way. And Ennis particularly has him come to this conclusion that this is what he is on the planet to do long before his wife gets killed. Um, and it sets him so you should not be thinking of him as a hero. Uh, no matter that he might accidentally do heroic things or just, you know, as a byproduct of what he's doing, the world in some small way might be considered slightly better, is not his motivation. It's not why he's trying to do anything. He is literally a man who likes doing what he does and he's very, very good at it. And he's kind of always been happy to have an excuse that was n never going to run dry. Um, and in this one, we jump back in time to uh, him being in Vietnam. And it is always worth pointing out that, according to uh, Marvel Continuity... Punisher never went to Vietnam. There's a, a fictional country they made up uh, where they can have this kind of battle uh, so they don't have to engage with real-world politics. Uh, Ennis has clearly got that memo by now and is just ignoring it. Uh, and it means you kind of have to be aware of what they're talking about uh, in the grander scheme of things uh, with like what the NVA actually were trying to accomplish, why America was there, what the uh, ideal of the capitalism versus uh, communism debate is about. But also you can just enjoy it because it is absolutely full on action oriented brutality. It is very much in the Marvel Max series, which means it is the only kind of Marvel stuff that I would be genuinely worried about selling to children. Um, and in this particular instance, it comes about in one of the most heinous acts of brutality I've seen in a Punisher thing, up close and personal. And this is because Jason Burroughs, if you've got him as an artist, you do not want to waste him on people having conversations uh, in offices. You don't want to waste it on just really nice three-point perspective outdoor sequences. Don't get me wrong, he can do these things exceptionally well, because he does damn near everything exceptionally well. But his, his oeuvre encompasses some deep, dark, disturbing moments. And having him come and doing a Punisher comic book in Vietnam, it feels like to not take advantage of that would be a crime. So Ennis lets him off the hook here, and it is unsettling. It reminded me a little bit of the only bit of Django and Chain which I found unsettling, which is after all the stupid, over-the-top, ridiculous gun violence, when you see two people literally beating each other down. And the sense of violence, uh, because it's up close and personal, The even the sound design for that scene is fantastic. In here we don't get the sound so much, but it is the unflinching close-up of the violence that one human is going to inflict on another, um, where motivation seems to take a backseat just to the joy of doing something so unpleasant. It is. It's horrific. It's horrendous. But it's also perfectly tuned to what's going on here. Weirdly, the actual plot of the fact that he needs to go and rescue Nick Fury, kind of, takes a bit of a backseat. It's just it's used as an excuse to set up some violence and set up some characterization. I'm hoping that as it goes on, we're going to get more into that story. I think it's a really nice look at what it would be like to exist in this war as a kind of soldier. 
But right now, for issue one, just enjoy it for what it is, and it is spectacular what it does. Uh, that's it for me today. There's still like loads of stuff to review. I might do uh, uh, Brian Azzarello, uh, Western, uh, a cowboy story uh, later. Uh, but if you do want to see all those and don't miss out on anything, make sure you do all the social media stuff. Make sure you do the like, follow, subscribe, share, sacrifice, whatever you need to do uh, so you don't miss anything. Uh, until I see you again, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.